All right, guys. So my name is Aaron Dade, and um, I've heard kind of the conversation from my wife and some of the comments that guys had, people had out there, just wanting to hear the male perspective on restoration. And um, for me, the first step, you know, besides, you know, when we did the other video about surrendering to God's alignment, the first step to surrendering to God's alignment was about throwing my ego in the trash. Okay, so like I had to literally look at myself and say, okay, you broke this. Now, how do we fix this? Besides talking to many wise counselors, people that were of God that already had sp spoken this to me, I had decided uh, I'm not trying to hear that. Uh, I'm going to continue doing what I was doing. And a lot of that had to do with me being addicted to a certain culture. But that's a whole nother conversation. Today, we're just going to talk about just being trapped in your own ego. In other words, this is about the will of, at the time, it was about the will of Aaron. And this is not about the will of God. I'm deciding what my plan, plan is for my life because I know better than everybody else. And I'm not thinking about what God's will is for my life because you know, I can't see him or whatever I was feeling at the time. I was, I was feeling and not thinking. And that's one of the bigger things about pride is you're feeling and you're not thinking, you know, so you do things that have to do with how you feel other than how you think, you know, whether you're a logical person or you're an expressive person, either way, you do things based on how you feel instead of what the actual facts say, where there should be no bias. It's just, you know what, we should be doing this. And really that has to do with the word of God, because nowhere in the word of God, it says anything about, oh yeah, you should do exactly how you feel. It really actually talks about the heart being extremely deceitful and nobody really can know what the heart feels. However, that's a conversation for another time. Today is just about throwing your ego in the trash bin. So Really, how this happened to me, and I really want to explain this in Numbers chapter 27, verse 12 through, I would say, 18, where it says, One day the Lord said to Moses, Climb one of the mountains east of the river and look out over the land I have given the people of Israel. After you've seen it, you will die like your brother Aaron. For the both rebelled against my instruction in the wilderness of Zen. When the people of Israel rebelled, you failed to demonstrate my holiness to them at the, the waters in the wilderness of Zen. Then Moses said to the Lord, O Lord, you are the God who gives breath to all creatures. Please appoint a new man as a leader for the community. Give them someone who will guide them wherever they go and will lead them into battle. So the community of the Lord will not be like sheep without a shepherd. The Lord replied, take Joshua, son of Nun, who has the spirit in him. And so forth, the verses go on. Really what this illustrated to me, you know, and God led me to this verse because he knows me and a lot of times things that have to do with my name will catch my attention. And so, um, you know, I know Aaron is Moses's brother. And again, this is really interesting to me because this is Moses, you know, let my people go and all the rest of that. We all know who Moses is, but God said, yeah, you're going to die just like your brother because you didn't follow the rules. And God did the same thing to me. He held me accountable. He said, I gave you a family to lead. I gave you a wife to lead. I gave you children. I put my chips in on you. In other words, in human language, I put my chips in on you. And you decided, I don't know what I'm doing. And you decided that I don't want to be the leader anymore. I want to do what my flesh feels like doing. And in this, he said, yeah, you're going to have to die to yourself because I threw my ego in the trash bin. I said, you know what? Actually, I don't know what I'm doing, you know, and part of that had to do with fear, which is another thing with pride. But when I threw my ego in the trash bin and said, you know what? Actually, as Moses did right here, where he said, appoint a new man as a leader. I prayed for my wife that at least at the time when we were separated, that if she did find somebody else, at least he would be good for her. 
Now, the kids and all the rest of that, I can't really say that some of the things that I said because I was not a holy man at the time, so I was not trying to hear any of the rest of that. But God let me know um, that the fact that I was willing to accept the fact that I had done wrong was part of the journey of going forward and giving up that control that I sought so deeply. Because throwing your ego in the trash bin Really, that's another way of saying surrendering to God's alignment and surrendering to his will and not your own, you know, because a lot of times, you know, we, we get so convinced that we know what we're doing instead of saying, God, you know what you're doing. You know, we're so convinced we know what we're doing. We no, this is the right thing to do. And this is the right thing to do. And it has absolutely positively nothing to do with God's word. It has nothing to do with what he says to do and how he should, how you should continue in your life and how he wants for your life. And what ended up happening was when God came to me and he spoke to me about my own selfishness and how I was think feeling instead of thinking, he let me know and has shown me that when he put his love and his word in my heart and I received it, instead of being selfish, I became the new leader for the family. Not the old leader that I used to be, but the new leader for the family. The one that has time for his children to help with their homework and has time for his wife to talk to her about her feelings and me about my feelings. Has time to spend time with God and talk to God about his word and learn more and more and more about his word. Why open my ears instead of just talking from my mouth. You know, because again, I was doing what I felt and I didn't feel like listening to the Bible. I didn't feel like reading the Bible. I, I thought, oh man, that's for Jesus freaks and all the rest of that stuff. I understand who God is, but you know, yeah, it's not something I can tangibly see, which is absolutely not true. That was completely incorrect of me to think of. I was thinking that he was not something that I could see. And actually he very much so is something that you can see. God does stuff for my family all the time that are tangible things that you can see and feel. You know, when you make sacrifices, God does things and shows up and shows out in your life. And a lot of times we ignore them like, oh, that's coincidence. You know, this is just something that just happened. Oh, this parking space in front of the grocery store for me is not favor. It's just coincidence. Or um, like recently, my son decided, because we all know how expensive Nintendo Switch games are. He decided to trade in his games. And we thought we were going to get, you know, 35 bucks according to the website. We are going to get 35 bucks. So we show up to the store. His new game was $60. We were going to pay for it anyway because my son was making a sacrifice. And so what God did was he was like, no, you're not paying for anything. He made the entire game free. And most people would have said, oh, that's coincidence. We got lucky. We didn't. We were immediately praising God and saying, look at you showing up and showing out in our life. Now we have money to spend on other things that are also tangible. This is him showing up and being tangible. So when my children, something that I did first as the leader was say, this is not about my will. This is not about me. You know, this is about what his plan is, when I started being selfless, now all of a sudden my wife is being selfless, then my children are being selfless, now everybody is following in line according to his alignment, but I had to throw my own ego in the trash bin first, and so for you men out there, or women that are looking for restoration in their marriage, or men you're looking for restoration in your marriage, what you have to understand is this is not about you. This is about God and his word and his plan. This is not about you. So, you know, whatever you're thinking that this is about me and this is how I feel, because that is so dangerous. That is, I cannot explain how dangerous it is to start feeling instead of thinking and researching in the word and praising God. Because praising God has nothing to do with feelings. It has nothing to do with, it's something that you need to be doing to God to let him know, I see you in my life. And praising God and going back to numbers. I mean, this is completely obvious when he says, for you both rebelled. He's talking about Moses and his brother. Both rebelled my instructions. So when I rebelled against his instructions, when I wouldn't do what was necessary, he immediately said, I'm removing you from what the gift that I gave you because 
you're not listening to my instructions. You're doing what you want to do. And it also says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things shall be added to you. Now, most people probably have heard this verse or whatever, but they really haven't paid attention to it. Okay? If you're seeking the kingdom first, then nowhere in that verse does it say, Seek your will first. Seek what you think is good first. You know, it says seek the kingdom first, and it's his kingdom. So that again, like I was saying about throwing your ego in the trash, is so important for men because we're the leaders. And I thought that if I was a leader and I just didn't say anything because I didn't want confrontation with my wife, it was okay. So we didn't have to talk about my feelings or her feelings for that matter. I don't want to talk about her feelings. It's a long conversation. It's the way I was looking at it. And I was very, very wrong. There are several different ways that I looked at marriage. I looked at raising children. I looked at family life. That was completely wrong. That was complete. I looked at finances. I looked at commitment. I looked at several different things. Communication. Completely wrong. I looked at it completely, to be honest, selfishly. Like communication was about what I had to say and what I wanted to say to whoever I was talking to. It had absolutely nothing to do with God's word or or God's will. It had nothing to do with that. It was all about what I wanted to say. And people that know me know I'm a very humble guy. I'm a very nice guy. I'm one of the less selfish people that you will know. However, the way I was thinking was because I was feeling a certain way. And so I was being selfish. Joshua also, um, chapter 24, verse 15, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. And again, another verse where people are not, they've heard it countless times, but they are not paying attention. They are talking about what works for them. In that verse, it talks about me and my house and what you're doing, what we're doing in my house. And it doesn't say in my house, we serve me. It says, no, in my house, we serve the Lord and we serve what the Lord says. And the kingdom of, uh, like we're talking about in Matthew, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So all things shall be added to you. To me, like, and especially in numbers, when I was talking about it earlier, you know, this was really important to me, this this verse, because it's about selfishness and selflessness. Because remember, this is Moses, okay? I just freed an entire nation of people based on your word. I just helped write an entire chapter in your, in your book. However, since I didn't do a certain thing, now I'm going to die? Like, imagine how he must have felt at that time. But the rules said that I seek God first and God is selfless, selfless. He's not selfish. So Moses said immediately, you know, he said, okay, for my people. And he also first in his alignment, Oh Lord, you are the God who gives breath to all creatures. Please appoint a new man as a leader for the community. Give them someone who will guide them wherever they go and will lead them into battle. So the community of the Lord will not be like the sheep without a shepherd. He is saying that, you know what? I may feel a certain way, but this is not about me and what I'm thinking or how I feel. This is about being righteous and this is about doing what's right under the rules that my Lord God has said, this has nothing to do with how I feel and who I think that I am. And just a, a quick note about throwing my identity in the trash bin. This is, you know, one of my sins that I repented for a long time ago and that I've healed as a soul wound to myself. And other men, you may be feeling this and, you know, um, such a dangerous thing. And I'll explain exactly how dangerous it is. Okay. I had identity issues. I didn't know who I was. So, um, for instance, you know, a real quick example. If I got a 92 on a test, I wasn't excited about the A. I was, I was disappointed that I didn't get the other 8%. And that was because I didn't understand who I was. I was an African-American that speaks well, that 
<clears throat> that's good looking, that's, I'm smart, and all, all these people like me, but a lot of the other people that look like me and that I knew didn't act like me and didn't think like me and didn't have a name like Aaron. So I'm like, who, who am I and why am I more importantly? And with all of those things, those questions brought answers that did not satisfy me at all. And so then therefore this created this hole that was festering inside of me. And so now to explain exactly how dangerous that is, the, the first entity that ever had identity problems was Lucifer. Lucifer was an angel that protected the throne of the other angels. He was an archangel. Okay. It also says in the word that he was extremely wise and extremely beautiful. He was incredibly beautiful, incredibly wise. And since he didn't know who he was, he thought that, oh, wait a minute, since I'm incredibly wise and incredibly beautiful, I must be the potter and not the clay. So he wanted to be worshipped instead of worshipping God. He didn't see a reason or a point in it. He wanted to be worshipped. And so that's where the fall came from. That's where I, the whole thing with Adam and Eve. But the source of this problem was he didn't know who he was and still doesn't. He has no idea who he was. He's just fighting to take as many people as he can with him. People, angels, whatever he can take with him, because misery loves company. We all know about that. He, Since he didn't know who he was and was miserable inside of himself, he just kept going until there was no end to it. And for men, we need to understand that we may not feel that way all the time, but the capability to feel that way is definitely in us. And not knowing your identity, not knowing that you're the son of the king, not a king, not just, you know, I'm the son of the president or I'm the son of some rich guy. I'm, or anybody, this is not about politics. I can already hear the questions, but like, I'm the son of anybody. No, you're the son of the king, the creator of everything. And so, therefore, your identity starts in there. My identity started in the word and explaining to explain who I was and what I was and what I was to be doing. And instead of being so angry at the fact that I didn't know who I was as just a human, you know, as just a person, I didn't, since I didn't know and I had identity problems, I, I just continuously went with what seemed best. It also talks about this in Romans chapter 8, verse 28 and 29. We know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him and have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. That's a very interesting verse. Or a couple of verses, but also I re really want to refer to, you know, and I always use this verse. This was the first verse I used in, in my recovery, not from any type of drug. It was really my recovery from an addiction to culture, to a certain culture that objectified women. Drugs were also part of that. The um, alcohol was also part of that. Money was also part of that. Money was a source. It was a worldly culture that I was addicted to, that I had, it was, this world was an idol to me because that's what I thought I was, I was somebody in the world, you know? So whenever I made a lot of money, whenever I knew a lot of women or had a lot of women, I thought that I was somebody important and that's not true at all. But at the same time with, with that verse and the verse that I started with, which was, uh, Romans 12, 2, and renewing your mind and not leaning on your own understanding. Um, and so I'll leave you guys with that. And if the, my wife and I are actually going to do a Q&A next week um, where you guys can, we'll go live and you guys can ask us questions. I will be there. So if anybody wants to ask me questions or ask my wife questions, you're more than willing to. You know, I really enjoy these times where, you know, I can look through the word and kind of give people knowledge, you know, because I definitely don't want anybody to per perish for their lack of knowledge, but where I can give people knowledge and understanding for what's going on um, in their life. And um, so, you know, I just want to uh, make sure that um, I gave as much information as I possibly could. And 
I look forward to seeing you guys soon. Thank you for watching the video and have a great day.